That small guilt that haunts you. Part 2. Chill out and dive into the story if you enjoy our vibe. Don't forget to subscribe and share Thread Tonic with your friends. Account 1. I was bullied in my first elementary school, and in the middle of fourth grade, my mom put me in a different school, where things were much better. In fifth grade, at the new school, a new student showed up a few weeks into the year. For some reason, I didn't like him, I still don't know why, and I was really mean to him, treated him like I had been treated at my former school. I've always felt terrible about that. Count two. Back in the 1990s, when I was like eight or nine, I had this friend who was really, really into Pokemon. We were both really poor, but he was way worse off than me. The people in his family were a bunch of shitty alcoholics and meth users, so Pokemon was really the only bright spot he had. He managed to get one of the old black and white brick Game Boy consoles and Pokemon Blue in a trade with some rich kid at school. Some friends hooked him up with all of the starter Pokemon and everything you could only get in red version, plus all the Pokemon that only evolved when traded. He was well on his way to getting all 150. Nintendo started doing these events at Hastings where you could meet a Nintendo representative and they would give you a Mew. He went to three of them at the Hastings he lived by. At the first two, they ran out of Mews before he got one. At the third one, he stood in line for like two hours and finally got his Mew. About a week later, he was staying over at my house. He let me play his Pokemon game. I made a new game, played for 15 minutes, then saved it wiping out his save file. It was unintentional. I just saved out of reflex, without thinking. It erased his collection and his official Nintendo Mew and left him with a Squirtle named Nugget and a Rattata named Nugget. He discovered the destruction of his save file and spent the rest of the night sobbing. After that, he didn't speak with me anymore. I've never felt so horrible. Three. When I was ten, a friend and I were horsing around Pier 1 Imports while my mom was shopping. We knocked over a display. We shattered a vase and broke a few other things. But there wasn't anyone around to catch us. So we quickly slunk away to stay close to my mom. For years, whenever we drove past a Pier 1, I would get this overwhelming feeling of guilt. Account 4. In October 2007, my dad passed away. I was living in Florida at the time, and it was pretty horrible. I came up for two weeks and left right before he died. I wasn't there for his passing, and I hated it. My first real girlfriend at the time did her best to console me. She was great, I loved her, but we got a little bit risky around Christmas, and she had a miscarriage at the beginning of the new year. We decided to make some space for ourselves, and me not knowing what that meant, made out with a girl at the bar and made plans to move back to my Midwestern state. She was married before and had a two-year-old son. I figured my mom and handicapped brother needed me. So a month or two goes by, and she comes back to me, and she never said I love you because it didn't feel right. During the whole time, I was very supportive, and the make-out session was a guilt on my mind. She was cheated on by her ex, and that was always a problem for her to open up. So I made up my mind to break it off the only way an idiot knows how. She came to my house for the last time and while we were on the bed. She says, I love you. I stop her and tell her that I made out with a girl and I'm moving back home. She put on a brave front and left but was in tears as she drove away. I'll never forget or forgive myself for the worst mistake of my life that still haunts me five years later. The first woman that I ever loved and told me that she loved me, I broke up with on the spot. I think about it daily. Account 5. In high school, I was extremely jealous of another student who would flirt with my boyfriend. At the time, I thought Magic Wicca worked, so I cast a spell wishing that she would go away and leave me and my boyfriend alone. She died a few weeks later of heart failure. I regret that damn spell. Not that it did anything, but that I wished her ill will, and it makes me feel like shit to this day. Count 6. I was 22 at the time and working in New York City. One night after partying and drinking, I'm in the back seat passed out in Buddy's Jeep as we are going home. I remember being startled and woken up as we hit what seemed like a big bump. But when I looked back, I could make out what seemed like the silhouette of a homeless man that had been sleeping on the street where the steam comes up to keep you warm. To this day, it haunts me. I was never 100% sure it was a person, or maybe my guilty conscience is reinforcing that regardless it sucks. 
Count seven. Recently, I was on the subway going downtown, and the train was packed. I couldn't even turn my head in any direction without bumping into someone else's elbow or backpack. When it got to my stop, a woman next to me asked, Can I transfer to the two-line here? And after thinking for a moment, told her that it indeed stops here across the platform. It does? She said excitedly. Excuse me. Excuse me. She pushed and shoved and contorted her way around the giant crowd off the train and made a nice path for me as well. And I headed towards the exit. Halfway to my place, I realized that there was no two-train transfer there. There was no two-train for a long, long time. She had gotten off that extremely crowded train during rush hour on my word that she could catch her connecting train. I've always felt so guilty, and I am still awaiting the bad karma to kick me back in my place. Account 8. My brother's girlfriend died, and I never called him or talked to him about it until about six months afterward when he called me. He said I was the one person he really wanted to talk to, and he kept waiting for me to call him. We had a fight a few years earlier and didn't talk for a couple of years until, again, he reached out to me. And I really wanted nothing to do with him. He killed himself about six years ago on the third anniversary of her death. I do wonder if my inaction after her death had anything to do with that, like maybe I could have helped him through his grief. 9. I had unprotected sex with my drunk best friend who was engaged at the time. I know stupid decisions. We were both horny drunk teenagers. She became pregnant and rushed her wedding. We never talked about it. I don't know if she doesn't remember that night or just pretends it never happened. Now, seven years later, she lives happily married and has the cutest seven-year-old girl whom I am pretty sure is my daughter. I've never had the courage to confront her and clear things out because I don't want to ruin her life or cause her troubles. Someday I will have the courage to tell her. Count ten. My mother had been trying to call me constantly in April to wish me happy birthday. I ignored it because she was schizophrenic, and it hurt me too much to talk to her. My dad and I had to fly up to Colorado to pull the plug on her in May because she had liver disease. She knew she was dying and just wanted to talk to me. I ignored her. Every. Single. Time. 11. When I was younger, my siblings and I would visit our great-grandparents almost every day. It was hard to say goodbye to my grandfather because he was losing his mind and had trouble remembering our names. I decided to just jump in the car without saying goodbye, because I would see him soon anyway. He died two days later. It's been years, but I really do regret it. Count 12. In my seventh grade Spanish class, there was this guy who got picked on because of his attitude, the way he dressed, etc. Stupid, petty stuff. One day, I thought he was being annoying, so I turned to him and said in the bitchiest voice ever, Nobody likes you. It's been a couple of years since then, and I still think about it and wonder what would compel me to act like that when I know how much words can hurt. Not my proudest moment. Account 13. Kind of a similar story, but not me. When my brother was in sixth grade, he was really annoyed at one kid, so he sent him several texts along the lines of, Nobody likes you. If you died, nobody would be sad and go to your funeral. The kid was a little shit anyway, and my parents knew it, but they still made my brother apologize to the kid for fear of damaging him with the insult. The next week, they both completely forgot about it and now are decent acquaintances. At least this isn't a sad ending. TLDR, bro insulted kid he hated, a week later they don't even remember, and they go on with their little lives. 14. When I was about eight years old, I played a ton of RuneScape. My friend told me about a website where you fill in ads to get RuneScape membership. Immediately, I began filling them out, but I found out I could only get minimal stuff without putting in a credit card number. Because of that, I went and found my mom's credit card and would put it into many websites to get RuneScape membership. I didn't think it made a difference and thought I was getting free membership and all was good. However, soon after my mom freaked out because she had a ton of debt on her credit card and we started getting a bunch of random shit coming to our house, like hair products and telephones, etc. Because of this and other things, we could not make the deposit for the house and were kicked out. We're still staying in the apartment that we moved to after getting kicked out. I still haven't confessed to my mom about what happened. She thinks it was a keylogger that got her credit card number. Account 15 
When I was 14, I went on a trip to New York City with my school. We had some free time in Times Square, so I went around taking pictures with all the people in costumes. I didn't tip anyone. Now I'm worried I put the naked cowboy out of business. Account 16. This may get buried, and it's a little depressing. Long story short, I used to work at a petting zoo with an older woman who I became friends with and would go horseback riding with. I was 15, she was in her late 40s. One day my aunt invited me to go see Disney on ice with her and my cousins. I told my friend that I wouldn't be able to work that night, and she said that wouldn't be a problem, so I called my parents to come pick me up. Once they got there, my friend gave me a stuffed horse I had been looking at and told me to have a good time. And as I walked out, she said goodbye. Now that doesn't seem like much, but I thought it was kind of strange as we normally just say, see you later or just plain bye. So fast forward to the rest of the night, I get picked up by my aunt at home, and the four of us go see Disney on ice. Nothing too special, but it was all right. However, I get dropped off at home, and as soon as I walk in, I see my mom sitting on the couch crying, and I immediately feel shaky and worried. It turns out while I was out at the show, my friend had committed suicide. I found out a couple of days later that she was bipolar, had financial and family issues, and had also attempted suicide before. I know it's not my fault and that there's nothing I could have done, but I wonder if I had stayed, maybe she wouldn't have tried that night and I could have had more time to learn from an awesome lady. Account 17. Even now, as a teenager, I am tempted to stave off the visits to my great-grandmother. It's easy enough. Two essays, a shit ton of math. But I realize that that is a terrible idea. I just lost my great uncle, and I hadn't seen him since last Thanksgiving, and our family is already separated enough. I will not miss this chance to see her because I know I can prevent irreparable guilt, regret, and misery. I'm going today. It doesn't answer the thread question, but you can see yourselves as the fellows that reminded me how important it is to just do it and not slip into stupid teenager mentality. You saved me from devastating guilt because I know she's close. Thank you. Sad edit, if anyone is still here, my great-grandmother died today. I'm so shocked, and yet I felt like it had to be soon. She had begun hallucinating the day before, I'm told, and then she passed away today at 8.30 this morning. I was at school. So unsuspecting today. And I prayed for her. I go to a Catholic school where we can add intentions in our prayers, never once imagining that it was over before I even said the words. I am immensely glad that I saw her when I did and did not tarry, as my first response might have been. R.I.P. Grandma. 1917-2012. Count 18. I stole $20 from my mom's purse a little over three years ago. I was a raging bulimic and needed money for my fix. Food. As far as I know, she didn't notice because she had a lot of cash in her wallet at the time. About six months after, I went into treatment, and I have been doing great now for a really long time. I still feel guilty about it, though. Yes, I had a mental illness, but I still knew it was wrong and was so messed up I didn't even care. I've been considering returning the money and writing my mom a note fessing up to the situation and telling her how sorry I am, but at this point she's so proud of me and how well I've done, I don't know if it would just hurt her more to know that I went that far. My parents did a lot for me to help, and I did a lot of crappy things during that time to my whole family, but that is one they still don't know about.